Hi friends, welcome to the Wild Side. I'm Steve Hall. We are connected with deep roots to the forest. It's not simply because of all the trees surrounding us. It's everything that trees give us. Just take a quick glance around you. How long does it take before you see something made of wood? Trees provide a massive support system for our lives. To maintain that structure requires research and investment, not just by foresters, but by businesses. Comfortably located beyond a corn crop in the tiny town of Huntland, Tennessee, freshly harvested hardwoods are on a complex journey to the world marketplace. Once um, we decide we're going to cut red oak, we're going to cut white oak, whatever it is for the day, we will send our big wheel loaders. They'll go pick out the pile of, of red oak logs. Today it was poplar, poplar logs, and start loading those onto the deck. A tour of Thompson Appalachian Hardwoods follows a tree trunk on its way to the lumber yard. We're taking all of the bark off of the logs. That bark is going to be, um, a lot of people would be familiar with mulch, residential mulch. That's what bark a lot of times is made into. Um, also, it's a good biofuel, so it can be burned in steam plants. We've got some that goes to a pulp paper mill um, where they burn that to generate steam um, to make the paper. Um, so that was the first step. From there, the logs go into the mill, and it starts the process of converting the round log into flat lumber. It's important to tell you this is a family-owned small business with a legacy that started with immigrants from Scotland. Claire Getty is the chief financial officer, and she works for her dad. My family ended up on a land grant in Montgomery County, Georgia, that was a Revolutionary War land grant, but they ended up with a farm and timberland, and part of their annual crop was to harvest, to skid those logs to the river and to make a river raft, and then they would run that river raft about 120 miles down to a mill down along the coast of Georgia, and that was a cash crop for them. Um, after that, they built a mill, and um, that's where my grandfather uh, started working, and. It's just been a part of our family now uh, going on a century. Since 1993, Thompson Appalachian Hardwoods has evolved from a small green sawmill into a global exporter of wood. It's an intoxicating business to be in. I mean, it's the people, it's the, the manufacturing side of lumber and working with forestry management and working with harvesting and then the customers and the things and ultimately to see a consumer buy a product that goes in their home and just to fall in love with a whether it's a wooden countertop or a set of kitchen cabinets or hardwood flooring or molding millwork any of the things that we would end up doing with these products that we manufacture uh, it's just a thrill and the people it's a business that just almost doesn't exist anymore the way that people treat one another and they work together and it's just a wonderful business to be in. And taking risks to grow their company requires a lot of faith with the wisdom to use available information. It's a driver for actually where we located here in Huntland. We sourced um, information from the U.S. Forest Service and out of that information I did my research, it took me about a month. Uh, to determine counties that had the right mix of raw material for what we wanted to manufacture, the right density of forests, the right ownership uh, profile, and um, that's what drove us here was that information. Azimuth is going to be 243. We're looking at growth and mortality, we're looking at land use changes, um, anything that might be going wrong with the forest, you know, we're monitoring that. A team of foresters from the Tennessee Department of Agriculture Data Analysis Unit is scientifically surveying a plot of land, gathering the kind of information the Thompson family used to choose a site for their sawmill. The depth of their findings on the landscape requires a series of complex calculations. It is complex. We're managing a lot of moving pieces. We get data from our state forests. We get data about water quality. Um, and logging sites. We also have foresters that are in the forest every single day taking measurements on private and public lands um, on about 4,700 plots uh, spread out across the state of Tennessee. We do have a lot of technology which does help us and one of the best things that we have is what we call a hypsometer, a two-device system that we do place on a 
on the tree and this makes a sound, which then this device right here called the hypsometer will pick up and then calculate our horizontal distance for us. And then when we shoot the top of the tree within this device, it will then take the angle and give us a height of the tree. What our unit is responsible for monitoring is how forests change over time and having a good uh, pulse on the forest resource in Tennessee. We monitor things like changes in the forest type. We want to know is there you know, a change in the percentage of oak or hickory that is on the landscape. We also monitor wood quantity and quality. This information is vital for our mills so they know you know, what they can sustainably harvest, where that can be harvested, and any issues that might arise in the future in regards to their wood quality. They look at pests, they look at wildfires, they look at all of these different things, and they're seeing what those impacts are going to be. So for us, it's predicting the future as much as you can. And these are long trends. These are not things that, that are going to change in a year or two. These are things that change over a 20-year period of time. And the fact that data is being harvested and used is critical for us. The data collected by the Tennessee Department of Agriculture is also provided to the U.S. Forest Service for its forest inventory and analysis program, providing a national perspective. So it definitely helps future research in what we're doing and looking at how we can save some of the species that may not survive climate change or where we can put them, like give guidance on where they will survive so we can kind of protect those species. The lumber business requires a lot of trees for all the wood products people demand. From lumber to build a structure, to the furniture that goes in it, and every piece of paper that passes through it. We have certified inspectors. They will mark the boards, they'll decide, okay, pretty much if you think about it in school, if, the, if an A, B, C, D, or an F, it can even make an F. Um, we've got different words for that, but that's essentially what's happening. Then from there, those um, boards are going to be pulled um, at the green chain by those grades. So we want to put all of the A students in one place, all the B's in another place, all the C's in another place, because those have different markets, um, and they're going to go into different products. Continuing success relies not only on the manufacture of lumber, but also on responsible land management and sustaining the raw natural resources. We grow it every day, we don't mine it, we cut the tree down, we do good forest management, we help with ecosystems, we help with wildlife habitat, we help meet a, a landowner's financial objectives. What we are is we're part of a management, a sustainable managed forest here in the United States that produces a vast benefit for just so many people. Establishing a firm foundation in forestry is not only a driving force for the Thompson family, but also their contribution to those who depend daily on their good protection and preservation practices. We want to be that good steward, we want to be that good employer, we want to be that good vendor, that good, that good customer across that whole gamut. Um, and reputation in our industry is everything. There's a sense of community that we love, but then also, I also feel like we get to give back to the people that we work with every day and creating a positive workplace for people in a, in a rural economy that doesn't have an abundance of economic opportunities, but, but we can be here in our, in our little town. We've been able to take defunct industrial properties that have closed over time and industries have gone other places and we've been able to breathe new life into those and to bring more economic vitality into this area and you know that is a purpose bigger than just you know what I want to do and what what my goals are and that's what that's what I've loved about being able to be here. The Thompson family hopes their long legacy in the lumber business continues in the future and the research done by the Division of Forestry today should help them plan for products from the forests of the future.
Tennessee's Wild Side has been a presentation of the Jackson Foundation, educating viewers about wildlife, natural resources, and opportunities for outdoor adventure, with support from the Tennessee Department of Agriculture, promoting wise uses of Tennessee's agricultural and forest resources to develop economic opportunities and ensure safe and dependable food, fuel, and fiber for all citizens. And from Tennessee State Parks, where you can camp by the riverside, retreat to the mountains and escape the busyness of life. From Memphis to Kingsport, you'll find the perfect adventure in Tennessee State Parks. Wildside is produced in association with Rockwater TV.